Are you a fan of the Rigmotech Sports Car Series? Now is your chance to show off your favorite sim racing series by visiting our online store. With clothing and apparel for women and men in all sizes, merchandise and gift items like coffee mugs, laptop skins, mouse pads, and many more items to display your passion for sports car sim racing. Visit us today at ExtremeMotorsports99.com and click on the online store button. Thank you for watching and supporting the Rigmotech Sports Car Series. Tradition, duty, speed. The last time we visited this classic venue was in Season 9, nearly two years ago, where Robert Hartley was victor over Giuseppe Iannucci by just 0.3 of a second. And now, we welcome you back to Lime Rock Park, the road racing center of the East, located in Lakeville, Connecticut. In the United States of America, just a four hours drive from Watkins Glen International, a two hours drive from Big Apple, Manhattan itself, and it hosts the third round of the Extreme Motorsports ECMO Tech Sports Car Series presented by Performer Elite Texas Graphics. With all coverage today on Apex Racing TV. We can see the track up on screen, of course, as well. Track length of two kilometers or two and a half miles. Minutes of choice. Oh, good temperature out there, 28 degrees, but it is overcast as well. So not too much sun shining onto the racetrack. And look at the winds as well, up to 16 kilometers an hour. Plenty of elevation change available for the drivers around these seven corners. Only one of those to the left, the other six are to the right. And that will challenge the drivers today for 60 minutes of racing action. Good afternoon, everybody. Jonathan Simon on hand in the commentary booth alongside Alex Simpson, of course. And Alex, here we are at Lime Rock Park. I just spoke about the asymmetric kind of layout here. It's clockwise in nature, this circuit, but with only one corner to the left, who knows who's taking that risk, possibly set up the car asymmetrically and gain a bit more lap time. Yeah, I have no doubt there will be a few tricks that we may have learned from the very early days of iRacing, back in the rookie, come out into the Class D, see what those guys were doing in their setups there. But yeah, such a unique circuit with just the one left-hand turn there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, the drivers know this circuit extremely well, so I expect we'll see a lot of great racing in that MX-5 class. Um, but of course, the Mustangs as well. Uh, they're going to be, um, yeah, they take up quite a lot of room on this circuit. It's a pretty narrow circuit. So once we get to lapping, which is going to happen fairly quickly around here, it's going to be quite interesting, I'm sure. Before we head to your qualifying session, let's take a look at a quick track guide around Lime Rock Park ahead of this round. Number three, my tech sports car series presented by Performer Elite Texas Graphics. Welcome everyone to Lime Rock Park, located here in Lakeville, Connecticut. Great to have you with us as we provide you your track guide today in the Ford Mustang around this one and a half mile road course. Designed by John Fitch, Lime Rock was constructed in 1956 and is the third oldest road course in America today. The course is unique though as there are no grandstands. Fans gather on the hillsides to enjoy the racing here at Lime Rock and this course has seen minimal changes over the years and has been raced by legends like Sam Posey and the great Paul Newman. Newman. The course still hosts major events to this day and remains one of the greatest road courses in the United States. Well, let's begin our track guide around this short but fast-flowing road course as we head up the front straightaway known as Sam Posey Straight. We come across the stripe and head towards Big Ben, turns one and two. Want to let that car drift out just a little bit out of one, right back to the bottom of the apex of two. The only left-hander at the course here, turn three. Very tight corner, you want to stay to the left so you can set up your entry to turn four that brings you right out onto the back stretch. No name straight, they call it. This next section is my favorite, the uphill. Turn five here at my park. up the hill. Got to lift just a little bit over the crest there, let the car settle. This takes us to six, west bend. Back to throttle. 
use up every inch of track to head down the hill for turn seven, the final corner on the track. This is where you want to set up those overtaking opportunities and get that good run out of that final corner for this 2200 foot straightaway. Well, there's your track guide for Lime Rock. It's a quick one around here. Thank you for being with us. So that is your track guide for Lime Rock Park. Here are your championship standings up on screen. And Aero Nom leads your GS Pro class for the Mustangs. And Alex, when I look at this at the moment, Aero Nom has won two races out of two to begin the season. And who knows whether Robert Hartley or even Joe Jr., two quick drivers there for Madhouse Racing and Mango Motorsports, whether or not they can knock up Aero from the top step of the podium. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. I mean, um, Nom's so quick. Hartley's always quick. And, you know, there's a lot of good drivers in this, but, yeah, Nom is just relentless at the moment. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see if um, they can uh, topple him there, I think. I might just have a little issue with some sound, so I'm just going to quickly uh, sort that out. But I'll let you go through the rest of the uh, standings, Johnny. Yeah, for sure. Uh, standings will cycle through on screen. This is your Mustang Open class now. Jennifer McDonald, very quick driver up ahead. Now, there were some drivers at the start of the season who said they would be surprised if she wasn't leading the standings a few rounds into the campaign. Well, they're not surprised at the moment. <laughs> the 99 car for BTL Motorsports leads there by nine points ahead of Chad Parker, Robert Brist, Will Marshall, close behind, of course, as well. Now, we know there are a lot of bonus points you can pick up as well in the series, of course, for those that don't know. Uh, we've got uh, 35 points for a win, but if you do lead a lap or you do gain pole, that's one bonus point, of course, as well. There are also bonus points on offer for drivers who uh, achieve a certain amount of incidents below a certain mark. That's the worst way I could have explained that. Let's look at your MX-5 class. ST Pro, Jim List up ahead, ahead of Eric Violet. And John Allen, too. And the rest of the order on screen, as you can see as well. Jonathan White will be looking to gain some points here today in that number 10. And then your MX-5 open class, Jacob Beasley, head of Greg Mapp, with Lyndall McMurphy in the third position, of course, as well. Very tight for those final few podium spots there. But Jacob Beasley isn't too comfortable in the lead, Alex. And with 35 points available for a race victory, anything can happen today. Yeah, it's very, very early days, and you're right. I expect this championship's going to ebb and flow. It has, it has done for the past few seasons that we've been covering it as well. Really, I think until we get to the very business end, the last few races, we're going to start to see people sort of come to the top and gaps start to uh, start to appear. But, yeah, I think, um, well, obviously you're new to the series, but, um, yeah, it's so tough to call these MX-5 races. They're literally almost like a big, fat long snake the whole way through the race when was the last time you drove the mx5 because for me it was certainly <laughs> certainly around my rookie stages of my i racing career yeah so i think the last time i drove it was actually a commentator's race that uh <laughs> okay. was put that was put on i don't know if you were in that or did the commentary no, on know. that or something like that but yeah there was like a, yeah, a, a big gathering of commentators and broadcasters and it was for fun and all that sort of stuff um, but uh, yeah that was the last time I uh, I drove it um, yeah I, was, I mean it was this car I enjoyed this car as well so um, I think I actually might have uh, probably shouldn't say this on air but I think I actually did a race in the MX-5 on my old man's account as well like back when he was rookie just to get him out of rookie <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, we'll pretend that that's not true. It's just don't, a, a little fake story. <laughs> <laughs> um, top of the timing sheets right now because qualifying is... How much time is left? Just over six minutes remaining in qualifying at the moment. There are your standings up on screen. Aero Nom at the top of the timing sheets is... There's a lap time, of course, as well. Can't see it on the live timing page, but uh, obviously a very quick lap time, Alex, once I find this. Uh, resetting soon. Mike Dam, Kevin Ford close behind as well, but no one really there has to be said um, in the championship standings. I mean, 
Kevin Ford, where is he third? Uh, no real championship challenges right now, challenging uh, Aero Knob at the top of the timing screens. I mean, without Robert Hartley, it doesn't seem like he's racing here today. Makes the job a little bit easier for Aero. Yeah, it does indeed. Um, of course, drivers do have like some drops and things like that. But yeah, exactly. Going to be um, going to be tricky for Hartley to come back. Got nothing to um, sort of bank on later on. So yeah, he's going to have to absolutely go for it. But damn, I'm, I have no doubt we'll give him a room for his money. And Kevin on his day is very, very fast as well. So um, the Mustang get a, quite a bit of draft on that as well. So I don't think he's going to have it all his way. And certainly with the traffic, if, he, if those guys can stay with him until they hit the traffic then it's going to be, um, yeah, I think it's going to be fair game for any of them that are in close proximity come pit stops and things like that. But uh, again, I know you haven't sort of seen him, but this is where Nom is like on his absolute A game. He just seems to nail strategies when best to pit in and things like that. And that is what Dam and Ford have got to absolutely get right today. Talking about strategy, the tyre strategy, we're expecting that the Mustang and Mazda drivers will more than likely take just two tyres on their pit stop. So... Uh, that can prove interesting, of course, today, Alex, especially, I'm assuming, left side tires. We didn't get confirmation on that, but knowing that there's so many right-hand corners, the left side of the car will take so much wear, of course, as well, as we see uh, your MX-5 class standings, of course, uh, on the left-hand side of the screen. But with fuel, of course, as well, we're expecting the drivers to make at least one stop today, pitting about 40 laps into the event of this 60-minute uh, race. So... It's going to be interesting come strategy time. So anything that Aeronom does, you're saying we should be replicating or following as an order. Uh, I th yeah, absolutely. He, like I say, he's the one that seems to be on the money in terms of um, doing that. But uh, even when they do come in with the pit stop, he's like, he just gets the fuel numbers absolutely spot on, gets to, you know an extra half a second here on entry and exit onto the pit road as well. And... Uh, you know, that's what makes all the difference. Those two, three seconds that sometimes he can gain just by coming in one lap earlier than what people think. Even if he's like in second or third place, I've seen him sort of come out two, two seconds to the good. So, yeah, that's what the guys have got to be aware of and, and fight against and make sure they absolutely nail it today. So with Travis Schwenke there at the top of the timing screens for your MX-5 class, he is eighth in the championship in your, I think, eighth. Yes, there he is. Just confirmation he's eighth in the championship. 32 points to his name. If he can sustain this for the rest of the session, which is likely in these next few minutes, he will gain that extra bonus point, which is uh, mostly important, of course, too. And are you a big fan of the bonus points as a driver? Do you really put a lot of focus on them? Um. I mean, I don't normally, to be fair, like in some of the most recent leagues that I've sort of been involved in, haven't really sort of focused on them. But um, I know for certain that Nom does pay a particular attention to them because he knows that actually you can win the championship with those bonus points. So he does some absolutely, um, you know, just trying to get like the sort of the incidents, the fastest laps, all those ones and, um, you know, that can get it there. He, he'll go after them. So... Um, I have to say in the time I've covered this series I haven't sort of seen it come down that close yet just because the last three or so no one's just been so dominant but um, there certainly has been uh, a, a case in the past where it's been super close so we'll see let's see don't think I see any other cars out there on the racetrack for the moment no it looks to and me as if it's empty Oh, fine. should be over then. I mean, unless somebody comes out now, very unlikely that the tires can get up to temperature, of course, as well, in just one lap to set a good lap time. But um, I think that's pretty much your qualifying sessions done and dusted. We should look at our results. We will do. Um, yeah, just uh, the standings will come up on screen, actually, when the session polls over. But uh, yeah, occasionally we try and get a little bit ahead of ourselves and it'll, uh, it'll throw a spanner in the work. Something will crop up. Jack Dam, though, who's qualified second for your uh, Mustang class. A good performance from him, of course. So we've seen both Mike Dam and Travis Schwenke, who are lower in the championship standings, prove a good qualifying performance here today. Now, the the big question, and, and this is sort of unrelated to what I'm to that, but you mentioned traffic around Lime Rock Park. I think so. Is it a little bit worse at a short track like this? You know, this was one of my challenges when I first came into sim racing. I would try and run 
hundred car races around a short track like this just to practice maneuvering my way around traffic and not losing time. So this can be a, a big test for the drivers today. I think this is going to be a huge test, actually, because uh, as I sort of alluded to earlier, the Mustang's a pretty big car. It takes up quite a bit of room. And the MX-5, small, nimble, very good through the corners. There's not a great deal of time between them. 54 v. 56 second uh, laps here uh, today. So yeah, it's going to be difficult for the um, Mustangs to get by. I mean, usually they get by using their sort of their raw grunt that they've got. Um, but they're just it's going to be it's going to be tricky because the MX-5s are going to carry extra speed coming out of some of these corners. Like I say they know the track so so well as well. Um, like I say, I think if you come up against a, a big cluster, which is what I'm expecting that we'll see, um, it's going to be very very tricky for them. So yeah, watch. Like I say, I think pitting at the right time is going to be so important here as well. Just trying to work out um, exactly if you if you can gain five or six seconds going to make um such a such a key come um come the end of this race right just waiting for the um official um results to come up or qualifying results to come up on screen it's the second uh, the session cycles over we'll have that of course as well uh drivers just going through the last minute Enter, I assume, with each other, of course, as well. That's one of my favorite things about driving is, as, as much as everybody loves to take it seriously and all that, is whenever you do sports, Alex, I mean, there's always a bit of friendly friendly fire, or not friendly fire, friendly banter between um, each driver, of course, as well, all in good fun. And I like, for, especially when I see the Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton relationship, really makes me feel uh, good about being a driver sometimes. Yeah, no, I agree. The, uh, and that's something I think you get from league racing more than you do like the official series stuff on iRacing. You know, that sort of in banter in the league is so much more fun. You know, you're racing with the same people week in, week out. And uh, yeah, just as he was on the screen right now, that um, checkered flag man there, he was getting right into that, wasn't he? The new animations and stuff <laughs> like that, going for it. Unfortunately, there's no one on the circuit for him to be waving it to, but uh, yeah. He's working those... Uh... Working those biceps quite well. Session will tick over. We'll have a look at your grid in just a moment's time as the drivers head to our 60-minute race. There it is on screen. Aero Nom will lead the field away for your Mustangs. He's ahead of Mike Dam, the Canadian. What a brilliant performance from Mike Dam, and he, he needs to collect a strong haul of points here today. Kevin Ford and Brandon Whitworth will start in third and fourth, respectively, then lining up the third row are Jacobs. And Jake Johansson, of course, as well, in that number 86 in the ZVX Vroom Auto car. Then it's the Meh Motorsports car of Clint Vegas in the seventh position. Jennifer McDonald leads the open class, of course, as well. She'll start from the eighth spot, along with Leon Wright and Chad Parker rounding out the top ten. The rest of the grid will be on screen, of course, for your Mustangs. And then we'll look at the start of your MX-5 class. It is well pole position for that will go to Travis Schwenke uh, for Asbury Motorsports. Jim List behind alongside John Allen, of course, as well. They round that eighth throw of the grid. Michael Hilliard down the order, of course, as well on the Mustang. So he's hoping to climb his way up. A, a pretty poor qualifying performance from himself, but he'll be hoping uh, for he and his own car, of course, to climb up the field throughout this race. Uh, Jonathan White starts behind him. The rest of the grid there, Jordan Fike, Eric Violet, We'll see a few other names down the field as well, of course. Chris Thorman for D2D Esports. And Edgar Sanchinelli for Frito Sport Racing will start all the way down in 28th. Eric Holland rounds out the back of the field. along uh, Behind Race Marshal, by the way, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this car gotta, is out. We'll have it. Yeah. Got to be a bad qualifying if you uh, if you get put behind the Race Marshal. <laughs> oh. Um. So... This car is, uh, is ready to go. There'll be a formation lap, of course, as usual. Something I'm a big fan of. You know, I love a formation lap, even though it's sort of sometimes can be unnecessary if you're doing standing starts in, in sim racing. But that's something I always liked when we do standing starts. We'll have a rolling start here today. Very necessary in class racing, of course, Alex. This makes things a little bit more organized. Yeah, absolutely. The guys will leave a little bit of room. That's going to make it interesting for uh, Hilliard, I think, who's um, obviously tucked in with the uh, MX-5s. So he'll want to get going a bit sooner, but uh, yeah, he's going to have to be patient. And uh, 
I'm trying to think, I think this is the first time I've seen that where actually the grid's been that close that we have seen a slight mix of them as well. So, yeah, uh, hopefully he'll get through those guys um, pretty quickly, or maybe he won't if that's just genuine pace as well. That could be really interesting. There could be some frustrated MX5 drivers up front that will uh, kind of just wish that he'll get out of the way. Who knows? Tempers may fly. Exactly. There's your only left-hander of the course on screen. All the drivers have their way past that, and they ride up the hill through Big Bend, then the uphill. Probably the most difficult corner, I reckon, on the racetrack, the uphill, or the most exciting corner, it has to be said, Alex. Uh, I would say definitely the most exciting. I often, I loved getting a little bit of air there in the uh, early days. So the field will head down the uphill, the back straight, then West Bend coming up right now. They'll have one more corner to go, the diving turn. The pace car will pull in, and we will begin round three of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motec Sports Car Series, presented by Performer Elite Texas Graphics. Thanks to all you viewers for joining us today on Apex Racing TV. East car in. Green flag waves and Eero Nom heads round three from the lead. Yeah, good solid start. MX5's in the background as well, coming through. Solid start from everybody here through Big Ben for the first time. And Eero Nom quite comfortably maintains the lead advantage. Here's your MX5's right now as Travis Schwenke up the inside. Seems to have maintained his advantage. There is that number 91, or number 61, excuse me, of Jim List. Can't do anything about it. Travis Schwenke remains in the lead here, but Jim List is all over the rear end there of the MX-5. Of Travis Schwenke now, that MX-5 class is exciting right now as they head through at the S's and then Big Ben for the first time, of course, as well, starting to form up here through the middle part of the lap, but relatively clean starts, Alex, for both your grids. Yeah, perfect start. That's what we want to see. Um, no one uh, falling victim or anything in the first uh, couple of laps. So, yeah, sports on. Good, good start, lads. Let's um, see how this one's going to pan out for the rest of it. Usually the first couple of laps, that's the ones where we can see kind of a little bit of um, unfortunate incident. But uh, Nom, a good start. Seven tenths of a second away from uh, Kevin Ford, who actually got the jump on... Um, Mike Dam there as well, so Dam's going to have to come through. He's going to um, put a challenge into uh, to Nom, but um, yeah, nice little trains. That's what we like to see. Exactly. Now we see Schwenke back on screen. He is not getting a breath of fresh air here in the early laps. His list is still over all, all over the rear end. This isn't really an overtaking spot, Alex. Through the middle of the lap, that the real only overtaking spot you have at Lime Rock Park is at the end of the San Posey Straight at Turn One. Uh, that's it, really. That's all I ever remember being able to uh, get moves done in the old rookie series. So yeah, I think uh, you have to be patient. They go through the final corner. These. Uh, how does this look thrilling in the MX-5, doesn't it, at Lime Rock Park? One driver off into the gravel in the background. That looked like your fourth place driver of Jonathan White. Here they are alongside each other for the lead here. Schwenke is going to lose that advantage, possibly. Yes, he does. Jim List maintains first position, and that is your first lead change this afternoon for your MX-5s. Yeah, good move. Got that. Got the run. Got the drive. Clean as you, um, clean as you take and Travis knows there's no point in sort of being really... Oh, a little mistake, and um, Travis straight straight back through. Still alongside each other here. They're going to go through the uphill yet another time, and they, rightly so, begin to form up here. That corner, once you're on board, it just... saw in a track guide earlier how thrilling it can be. And then they go through West Bend, downhill to diving turn, as it's called. And it looks like Schwenke will still lead this lap despite losing the lead for about half of the lap so far. So I guess Jim List will would certainly look like a mistake, Alex. He'll probably be kicking himself a little bit. He had the lead for about half a lap there. Yeah, to be fair, I think these guys are probably going to exchange position quite a few times tonight. So, And uh, it's just to see that little group as well. It just sort of broke away. So everybody up until sort of um, Geordie Fike. And then there's uh, that little bit of separation. 
gap between them, only a couple of tents here. Here is your Mustang class. Ira Nom is still in the lead by, if I look at the timing screens, just about half a second, it looks like, for the moment. So uh, behind him, Mike Dam, of course, half a second. Behind Kevin Ford, who we're looking at on screen at the moment. Your top three not separated at all by over a second. That's how close it is uh, between this bunch here in the early stages. And Ira Nom just runs a little bit wide there through only left-hander on the circuit. And look at this. Kevin Ford starting to reel in your leader. Yeah, Kevin really going for it. Maybe thinking about a uh, a move. Just you can see, just get a little bit loose on the rear as they go up and over the uh, the crest. So the Mustangs, beast of a car that it is. Still got enough power just to get a little bit light at the top of that hill. And damn. Looking really tasty for uh, for a move as well, potentially, here. Brandon Whitworth is about two seconds behind this group, but your leader's starting to break away from the bunch. If I, like, I know, <laughs> I know it's illogical to really work together because you're all competing with each other, but I would just sort of tell this leading bunch, like, hey, let's not battle for about five laps and just break away from the rest of the field. Something that will probably never happen, though. What? Yeah. See, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of that. I think exactly that. Just Le Mans gone by. I was getting extremely agitated with people racing ridiculously hard in the first couple of laps when you know you were about to lose the draft of the uh, of the front sort of pack. Uh, yeah, I don't get it myself. You know, I think yeah, it makes sense just to stay in line and try and try and stay with them just for a little bit rather than uh, yeah battling that, that aggressively. Mike Dam in your Crypto G Orange racing car. Canadian on the third position. Having a peak here, possibly into turn one, Big Ben, but no way through for your Canadian driver, who we know has entered this round seventh in the championship. Qualified quite well, of course, as well. So uh, you still get a strong haul of points, despite not finishing first. I mean, 35 points for P1. Still 32 for P2, 30 for P3. So race victory not valued as much as we see Jeff Jacobs alongside a couple of drivers here. Yeah, a little bit of door to door there, wasn't there? Actually, a little bit of side damage there as well for um, Jacobs. So, because that's what we were saying just a moment ago, isn't it? Where uh, how hard do you battle in these opening laps? But actually, got freight train back a little bit there, Jacobs. So. He was um, at sixth place at the start of this lap and just dropped back down, sixth, seventh, and then eighth. So right getting through as well as um, Hansen there. The times on the left-hand side of the screen, some very quick times from your leaders, and Jacobs comes through. It's uh, quite a long way off the pace after being shuffled down the order that lap. And with that damage, of course, as well, he's not going to go any faster. Here we switch to your MX-5s right now. Is that one car off the circuit, your leader... Jim List, he keeps it together. Now, that doesn't hurt your lap times too much, Alex. If anything, you're sort of pushing to the limits. It's a good thing if you've got two wheels off into the dirt. Sometimes. Yeah, oh, yeah I'd say so. So, I think um, I remember coming through that corner, absolutely winging it around there and into the dirt. And uh, if I remember rightly, if memory serves me okay, you can dip a couple of wheels in there and you're not getting any off tracks or anything like that. It's only if all four wheels are, are off, I think, is that. I remember rightly. Yeah. That's something that you always, um, you always got to test out, you know, as you, you're driving around. Like some people think, oh, I've got to go through seven days of testing without an off track, which is impossible. But I think sometimes an off track is a good thing just to know where the limits are, you know, because in the race, that's when you start to to not go beyond the limits but in practice go for it spin all you want get all the off tracks you need you know until race day where the bonus points are on offer just having a little look if there's anything a bit further back just uh, all of a sudden we've got um, McMurray and Taylor uh, pretty close together three tenths so, but MX-5 staying pretty close. You can see actually from that sort of shot there, they were you know, they're all still relatively close together. Kind of what we expected. When are we going to start to see the Mustangs come through here as well? Here's the leaders. So that's not going to be too long. And actually, you can see they've already got a couple of cars just up ahead. 
can see on the relative there as well. So, um, Brookway and um, Prevenance. Like this. It's always a it's fun lapping cars. I think it's underrated the aspect of racing, you know? Well, we were, you know, I questioned what it was going to be like for these guys to get through, how much room there was going to be, what kind of run they're going to get. Now, of course, I know this is the quickest against the the slowest, effectively, so there should be a bit of a margin out there. But, uh, yeah, this is going to give us a good indication how much of a run can these Mustangs get off this final corner, how quickly can they get through. Well, it looks pretty simple, I have to pretty say. Wide, I think. Yeah, they're having, to, they're having to dodge a little bit, but uh, they're going to get through and... I think um, Ford gets through as well. Actually, plenty of room given there, so all three through and into turn one. Nice. Yeah, Eero and Noam caught them at the perfect time, but for Ford and the Rick Motec Motorsports car behind, a little different. Three wide lapping cars here for the first time this afternoon. Bravery at its finest. Well, I think once we see three wide in this section of the circuit, that's going to be brave. That's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Completely um, blind coming up uh, the, the uphill section there, of course. It's just something that, um, and we know, Alex, we were talking about this before the race. This series is so respectful and, and pretty clean in terms of driving standards. If we do see three wide racing, I actually would be surprised if there were contact made between any of the drivers. I'm sure they're going to try and avoid it absolutely best they can, but yeah, uh, here. I tell you, there's places that you wouldn't get three cars wide, that's for sure. So, yeah, it's good. I know it's going to get busy soon. Very, very busy. So, yeah. I'm going to be watching out for it. Of course, live timing is available, as always. And um, I'll put a link in the chat for you guys, just so that you can uh, check it out. But, uh, yeah, keep an eye on the event viewer there as well. We'll be, I'll be looking at that too, see if there's any... Uh, crashes or anything like that, we'll try and bring them up on screen as soon as possible. 100%, and we're 11 minutes through this 60 minute race, so over one sixth of the way through, and you can see your standings on the left hand side for your MX-5 class, it's still John, well it's John Allen in the lead now, ahead of Jim List, so that's changed uh, since we last looked at that, of course. Jim List now dropped down to the second position. Jonathan White in third, but your pole sitter for your MX-5. Travis Schwenke down into the fourth position. And he needs to get himself sorted. Here's a replay up on screen. Alex, let's talk us through it. Yes, this should be um, Alan going for the uh, for the lead. Oh, kind of late, moves out, but uh, good on the brakes. Just takes a little bit here. Too much speed in, but... Uh, he was committed, and I think that's why I kind of list. So, yep, go on, you can have that. I'll come back at you in a lap or so's time. But uh, that's how uh, Alan got himself to the front. Good, good, clean move. And uh, yeah, just like you said really early, uh, uh, Johnny, that's the, that's where those guys are going to go for the moves. I think down and into that turn one for the bulk of the uh, the race here. Yeah, logically, that's where you should be making the moves because it's the easiest point of the circuit. The best point of the circuit as well, of course. But the most exciting point of the circuit to make an overtake is anywhere in between, for sure. As the drivers form up here. Nice to see your lead for the MX-5. If I look at the standings, I think your top six drivers separated by two seconds, I think, it seems like. Yes, I can give you that information. Right there. There we go. Two seconds up on screen. So that's um, 25 in the Ashbury Motorsports car. And in the sixth position and almost peeling away from your lead bunch but for the moment Jim List having another peak to regain the lead advantage in your MX-5s he seems to have forced John Allen just slightly offline here how about a look into the only left-hander on the circuit coming up here through the S's and again but no way through Jim List, Jonathan White for Delta Racing, keeping him honest, of course, as well. In that blue MX-5, you can see in the third position. Liveries here is, it's something, Alex, you and I, we're sort of new to the series, of course. It's something that, um, Liveries is, I, I don't pay too much attention to it in motorsports, but something as we ride on board now with Jonathan White, something that I, um, to be honest with you, but can make a huge difference as we, to, to how your car looks, of course, you know, in a good way. It just, uh, 
I'm trying to say is it appeals more to other people. Three wide for the lead. That's more important. Yeah, here we go. This is what we wanted to see. Oh, uh, I think it was actually four. Four wide. Oh, epic. And just great from the guys there as well. When do you see that? That's for sure. Normally four wide ends in instant death. But uh, yeah, not this time with them on the Repetec series. Once again, the drivers just knowing what they need to do. Too early to go crazy. But uh, yeah, good from uh, Jonathan. New to the series, I haven't seen him before, so um, certainly looks like uh, he's willing to um, to throw one in there and battle with the front guy, so go on, Neil. Yeah, Jonathan White has to score the point this season, new to the series as well. A Delta Racing driver is now in the second position. Trevor Schwenke, as we know, in that battle that went three wide on the main straight almost. Um, back up to third. And look at the drivers there. Now it's going to be eight cars on the main straight for the lead. Six cars in a train. Mix 5 is just getting closer and closer as the race progresses, ironically. 15 minutes into this event right now. Have a look at White and the number 10. For the left-hander. It's going to stay close, Alex. No point making an unnecessary peak up the inside, you know. Just stay as close as you can up to the main straight. Yeah, I mean, I think... They're all completely aware at this point. They're so even on pace out there. No one's really going to break away. So it's all going to be about, again, the strategy when they pit. And uh, it's not going to be too long before this man starts to work his way through them. And uh, there's a little bit of battle going on. Ford managing to um, hold on. There he is in the Rickman Tech Motorsports car. Kevin Ford to make his way past the well, one of the MX-5s for the moment like Chris Thorman number 60 and you're right they're going to make their way close to the leaders soon and that could start to spread up your bunch as we see three wide lapping across the main stretch uh, the third driver there of Mike Dam also makes his way past so I'd like to see uh, it's it's going to be so tough to lap the top seven if they're still together here, or the top eight from that MX-5 class once they come up. You, you, you're rightly so flicked onto these guys. Look how close they are here, going up uphill. So about 10 seconds, I'd say in about four minutes' time, we'll see them beginning to lap this lead bunch. Yeah, really, it's, it's not, is it 10 seconds? I think it's less than 10 seconds. Let's have a check, actually. I'll tell you what, can go one better. There we are on the mini-map. You can see the top three in this class there really is not a lot and there's eight cars for them that have got to uh, navigate through it's gonna be uh, yeah this is gonna be tasty this is what's gonna really separate up those MX-5s as well they're gonna be cursing when these guys come around I'm sure just gonna break them apart interfere with that slipstream of course there's so much slipstream available in that MX-5 and that's kind of what keeps that bunch really really close together and a 55.2 era nom last time out. 55.6, excuse me. Best lap of 55.2. That the slipstream for him, because he's led most of this race. We see Kevin Ford and Mike Dam, the only drivers to dip into the 54 range. Do you think saving fuel will be worth it on strategy this afternoon if they remain in that slipstream? Uh, I... Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, if they can shave a second or so in the pits off, it could make uh, all the difference. Even if it's perhaps not jumping your, um, you know, your rival or something like that, it could be you just get out in front of a little bit of traffic that, you know, would affect you. Or some of the MX-5s in very early, three of them dipping in in the background there. So, yeah. If you, if you do pit at this stage, though, it's the opposite strategy. So they're running short, obviously, to start, Alex, and they're going to run through to the end of the event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course, but the leaders have gone by. Normally, they pit early to uh, sort of not get held up by the leaders. So, yeah, different different strategy for, um, for those three there. So you can see pitting in the bottom at the moment. Trying to see if the leaders, any of your top eight, here they are, MX, oh, who the MX5s are on screen. Actually, the Mustangs, you can see on the track maps, the blue number one and two there at the bottom right hand side are catching the top eight from the MX5s. Ooh. Trying to see if anybody, oh, we see one car pull Shot. off into the pit. 
Bobby Charles, yeah, he jumps on into the uh, pits. So he's thinking, right, this could be an opportunity. Are they going to get them? I, th I think it, um, yeah, it's going to be this lap as well. I was thinking that he perhaps had one more lap before the um, Mustangs would get through. We're just looking at Jacob Beasley. He's going to be the one that is going to get overtaken, I think, this lap by uh, at least Nom, if not Ford and, uh, and Dam. Didn't have to get out of the way before he gets any penalties for blue flags, of course, as well. Blue rims, green livery. Do you like that? Interesting livery. That wouldn't be my first choice, I have to say, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can't miss him, can you? That, it's definitely got that uh, that advantage. And actually, we might not get lapped this lap, or just about. So the leaders make their way through. So he remains out, and I wouldn't be surprised if Bobby Childs in that DC2 Esports car, when he pitted, he's currently tenth in the MX5. So you can see the clear track on the track map for Bobby Child. That's something I was about to say before was now, as we see. Beasley being lapped by a front run runners in the Mustangs just is going to lose so much time and he's going to miss out on the clear track. The MX5 should recognize, hey, look, behind that 12th place driver in the Mustangs of Mike Monaghan, there is a lot of clear track available. Yeah, nice little gap that you can sort of slip out into there as well. Damn, getting held up quite a bit there. Ford as well. So losing a bit of time to our leader right now. But uh, yeah, Beasley... Like you say, he could well have been held held up and compromised there quite a bit this lap. The last one, not so bad, but definitely. And some more of the MX-5 leaders in. That is Geordie Fike jumping himself into the pit stop. Maybe he's got the call to say, yeah, listening to our broadcast, come on in. Right behind <laughs> the uh, Mustangs, there's a nice little gap right now, and he is in. Yeah, the Jonathan problem for these drivers... Moore. Sorry. Oh, I was just White gonna say, is. yeah, Jonathan White actually, while we were looking at what was going on, does get himself to the front. So yeah, our newcomer to the series makes his way to the top spot. Awesome, leads a lap, of course, as well. Gonna give him some bonus points, of course, too, as we see John Allen all over the rear end again. Wow, White. That's the power slide through West Bend and now through the diving turn they are widening this racetrack to the absolute limit wouldn't be surprised if I see some gravel kicked up right now there it is just in the background one driver putting a couple of wheels into the dirt Ormond in the pit lane by the way in the meantime as we can see the bottom of the screen of course as well but quick lap times from this bunch the problem for the drivers pitting early as we see the Mustangs creep on them is that they are going to suffer with excessive tyre wear towards the end of the event yeah, no doubt, and I think some of these, because we've only got the one left-hand tyre, may only take two tyres as well. So the uh, wear's not going to be quite so significant on that one. Oh, no, I'm just going, uh, excuse me, I'm coming through here and, uh, yeah, breaking up this uh, little gaggle quite nicely. Did um, did we lose Dam? Where, Dam? Where's Dam? He's it's miles back. Dam, you're in third place. He's just dropped off the order a little bit. We're just dealing with all the lap traffic, of course, as well. Schwenke on the radio, too, of course, as well. He knows that this is getting quite intense right now as he gets lapped by the bunch. There's a few MX-5s in the pit lane, of course, too. And it is... Well, there's a lot of MX-5s in the pits right now. I see at least... I can count probably 10 that are in the pits. I might be wrong with that, but there's 10 listed as blue on the live timing screen. Uh, yeah, they're just a lap down. Uh, List and oh. Viola are the only ones that are in. And uh, actually just heading out at the moment as well. So this is, this is me, my first broadcast for Apex Racing TV, making about my fifth blunder today. Yeah, so great. Yeah, now that Nom's gone through, those, all the cars are lapped down. We'll, uh, we'll show us uh, uh, as blue. And uh, yeah, there. If I click on uh, Alan, for example, uh, Nom will be in red to indicate that he's a lap ahead. There you go. Why discuss that? Uh, there's so much argy bargy. Is that four wide? I see on the main stretch. Uh, we but, finally got it. And here is me saying there's no room in this circuit, but no, nope. <laughs> they're loving it. <laughs> Plenty of room. I've never. Um, I came across a clip in um, 
And NASCAR, I think it was the Class A series in the NASCAR, seeing five wide across uh, Talladega or something. This is like a Twitch clip from quite a while back. I've never seen five wide around iRacing. I have seen six wide in sim racing maybe about 10 years ago in a sim. I'm probably not going to mention, but quite hilarious to be honest with you when they don't make contact and it's so exciting to see. I don't think we'll get six wide at Lime Rock Park though. Well, I'll never say never, that's for sure. I didn't think we'd see four wide where they survived, but uh, they have, that's for sure. Oh, well, somebody who hasn't survived. Yeah, that was um, Greg Brookway for Jeff Racing there in that final corner. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened to him. I'll take a quick look at that. Oh. It's an unfortunate spin. Here's the replay up on screen. They go through West Bend now. It's going to happen at the diving turn. Has a Mustang clipped him? Oh, yeah. He's turned in on that number 93 of Mike Dam in the third position. A lot of damage to the 62 of Greg Brockway. And quite a miscommunication, of course, as well. The incident's under review by your race marshals as well. So that could prove pivotal for the race here today. Yeah, not what uh, Dan wanted at all. And talking of Mike Dam, I do believe I've got available as well the incident where he dropped some time. Might be wrong. Could be just a simple uh, simple off-track, but somewhere he lost that eight seconds, didn't he, earlier on? Well, no, that's just an off-track. So, yeah, not sure exactly where Mike lost all that time. He certainly did. He lost for a second there. Yeah, it's all, it's all coming undone, really, isn't it, for him at the moment? But he's into the box, needed to pit. Left side of the car up. Does the right go up? I think it's just fuel. That's it. So just left side tyres is all he's taken. That's kind of to be expected, I think, uh, Johnny, isn't it? Yeah, I've never, you know, I've never been a big fan of taking the left side tyres at a racetrack but I think at Lime Rock Park it's certainly a strategy that could come into play right now but certainly with some damage repairs you'd say possibly Alex of course yeah uh, I think you'll need it I mean um, I didn't quite see what the front of his car was like after making contact there so um, I think it's all going to be in vain though if um, it gets handed a penalty which of course is still under review um, Ford slicing his way through the traffic, still within eight tenths of a second of our lead leader. So he's having a great race out there and having to lap his own class now as well. So uh, people in the way. And this is um, Hilliard that uh, he just got by. Jacobs coming through him. That's a natural battle as well, that is, between uh, Hilliard and Jacobs. That's for 11th and 12th behind. And um, yeah, Jacobs coming out on top of that one. Ford is fourth in the championship, but with no Robert Hartley or Joe Jr. out here today, essentially takes the reins of second best driver, and rightly so, he's in the second position right now. Very close to Iro Noam up ahead, of course, for the lead. Uh, we are watching Jeff Jacobs in that number 38. One of your drivers in review. So Jeff Jacobs in the 38, the 63 car of the MX-5s of Lyndall McMurphy, their investigations. We also have the number 93 of Mike Dam lapping 62 car Greg Brockway. And they are also under review by the race marshals, of course, too. So penalties could come into play, drive throughs, of course, as well. And that could change the race here today for those four drivers, depending on the results of the stewards. Now, I um, just spotted something where gymnasts has just jumped back to the pits. Um, so, and he's way down, so what happened, to, well, that is what happened to, uh, to what was one of our, um, sort of race winner contend contenders there, so, let's see if I can get a better shot of that, um, because I think that he's perhaps speared off, Good. and then, oh, well, no, just hard hit, car done, and then, yeah, that's it, look, and jump back, so, just a mistake. See if I can go back a bit further. See exactly uh, what happened. Weird. Driver error. It just looked like the car just got into a bit of a bit of a state and couldn't 
couldn't settle back down and just pushed wide. Very strange. Never seen anything like, like that. I mean, it's not to say I haven't hit that wall in my rookie days, that's for sure. But Jim, not a rookie by any means. But yeah, I certainly plowed into it, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if you clipped the curb. Same way we saw Mike Dam, remember earlier, when he picked up the off track. But, uh, maybe he just lost the car and it flicked straight to the left. So just a bit of driver error there. But it certainly looked very odd. Like, I almost gave him the benefit of the doubt and thought it was some technical issue with the wheel, the wheel speared off left. Do you remember in the World Championship last year that happened to Marcus Jensen at the Nürburgring when his wheel just disconnected, reconnected, and he speared left into the barrier very oddly on the straight? Yep, yeah, exactly. Do you see some weird hardware, uh, hardware glitches? So. I'm trying to remember an Indy. I'm sure there was one at, like on uh, Indy as well, like a 500, one of the contenders for that as well. Just all of a sudden, bang into the wall. Equally, and I'm not trying to curse myself, <laughs> never had one in my entire sim racing career. Never a wheel failure. I have had connection issues and antiviruses popping up mid-race flipping up your screen, you know, back in the days where you couldn't run borderless <laughs> with third mode. And then your race is over as we look at Eric Violet in our MX-5 class. Yeah, you can see the intervals on the screen at the moment. So Violet, we're on the coattail of uh, Fike. Fike still within re sort of distance of Charles. And we wondered where uh, Bobby Charles might come out. One of the, the guys to jump in the pits first, of course. And he finds himself in third place now, so it was absolutely the right call. Well, from Bobby Childs. The problem is, he's going to suffer with some tie wear towards the end of the event, but he's certainly close for the lead here for the moment. And the gap is creeping down to Travis Schwenke up ahead. So it's 1.2 seconds around that range. Now it's starting to creep up, just as I say that. But look at the lap times for Childs, though, Alex. 57.8. So he's probably not going to be any higher than his position for the moment if I an mean, incident's taken away. Um, it just looks like he could be suffering with some uh, lap time issues for sure. Yeah, I mean, that could have easily been a bit of traffic, that lap that we didn't see. Um, but somebody who is on it and who has just pitted as well is John Allen. That was a 56.63. We saw that just flash up momentarily. Purple there for, uh, for class. So, yeah, do doing a great job Jacob Beasley into the pits so he will uh, give up the uh, lead so Travis Finke is going to take back over that one and he is, has got himself at sort of 1.9 seconds as it is across the line so actually Bobby Charles got himself into second so yeah good call um, from him Jonathan um, White there as well he comes out he was obviously in the lead before the pit stop window open so he's lost quite a bit of ground you can just see um, the interval also the gap time is that six seconds 6.7 seconds now that he is actually behind Travis so didn't quite get the right strategy maybe he took tires all around a bit too much fuel we'll never know but uh, it set him back quite a way more four tires all around I feel like for example let's say in this car in the pit stops costs you an extra four seconds five seconds i'm all for it because i feel like i can gain that in the next half an hour with those right side tires but again i mean it's something that you just need to test isn't it because i've seen people for pointless reasons take two tires but it takes longer for the fuel to go in and i say why don't you just get a brand new set of four and then they give me a great reason such as it might take five or six laps for the tires to, to get back up the temperature and they don't want to deal with those first five or six laps midway through the race. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there are some cars out there and some track conditions and things like that. You're right, you absolutely do want to keep the pressure up and things like that. So, so I think, um, again, to use Le Mans as an example, you know, the pressures drop, they're so low. Um, the car loses so much straight line speed and things like that, the LMP1s, you know. It was almost worthwhile trying to sort of extend their stints and double stint and things like that. Just to um, avoid that one lap that was quite considerably slower than the rest, so... And uh, White surely shaping up a, a move here. 
and uh, Hilliard in to the pits. I'm actually showing it out of the race, but no, he jumped back, so not having the best of days is uh, Hilliard. Hey, certainly not. There he is through turn one. He's racing his own Michael Hilliard racing car here today, the number 74, the American note is down the order and he's uh, he's being passed by even some mx5 out there so um, or a few mx5 so his day is certainly not going well look at john allen screaming up the hill through the uphill then we come through west bend this thrilling right hander here we ride on board the defined auto works driver goes through the final corner now he rise up to about 200 kilometers an hour just under as he hits Big Ben for the first time, but he's really pushing to the limit here, Alex. Yeah, he's got 1.3 seconds back from Violet. He needs to get firmly in that draft. You can see those guys just battling ahead. And all this time, Svenke is disappearing up front. So, Alan, showing that he had the pace, of course, purple a couple of laps ago. He can get to these guys, get through them. He might have a chance of trying to hunt down Travis, but yeah, Travis is... Uh, nailed it here with the uh, traffic and the pit stop got himself that little margin all good just having a uh, look on the um, GS class as well there's been a change around there with people's pit stops and things like that and Dam has actually come out in second place so um, I take it no further word on the um, incident that he was involved in I don't know if you saw anything on screen Oh, there, it looks like he's got away with it. Let me have a look one more time from race control. Ooh, so, who's that? Very nine, a very violent ahead, right? Very close as well. This is becoming a bit of a tussle now as uh, the MX-5 is trying to scramble for position, but Mustang's trying to come into play, and we've just heard word from race control. No action on any of the two or three incidents that were reviewed the few instances that were reviewed and confirmed and that means that Mike Dam will retain that second position so they probably felt that the driver of Greg Brockway probably just turned in on Mike Dam at the final corner and uh, they probably felt that Mike Dam was rightly well had all the right to the inside line at this corner right now diving turn the seventh corner at Lime Rock Park yeah once again this battle is just building back up I thought perhaps with the uh, traffic we may have um, been robbed of what was going to be an absolute epic um, GS battle, uh, sorry ST battle, but absolutely not. Oh, oh I thought someone just got disqualified, but uh, no, just, <laughs> no. a little, just a little blink. <laughs> uh, no way, so plenty of incidents available in the series of course as well. I think once you exceed, so in a 60 minute event, because we know that there are some rounds that are 90 minutes. The the next one, I mean, Watkins going for round one was 90 minutes. Most sport coming up for round six will be 90 minutes, of course, too. But in a 60-minute race, every driver's allowed 17, 17 incidents. Once you reach your 18th, Alex, you receive a, a deduction of one race penalty point and a drive-through when you reach 23. So it is acted upon. It is enforced on by the race marshals. But looking at the instance so far, I don't think anyone... Well, I can't see it in this session. But I don't think anyone at the moment, doesn't look like, is uh, really close to that incident limit. No, it looks looks pretty close. Um, I mean, obviously, we can only see based on sort of GPS points of off tracks and things like that. It looks pretty It looks pretty low, to be fair. Everyone looks like they're being very well behaved. So, yeah, yeah I'm pretty accustomed to seeing that in this series. But... Uh, yeah, oh, don't know where to look. There's great battles for second, no matter where you look on the circuit right now. But uh, yeah, GS, um, Ford on much, much newer tyres, it's fair to say, all over the back of um, Dam. Dam done well to get himself back into second. They're 2.9 seconds behind a leader. Didn't they need some traffic to, um, to help them out right now because... Uh, Norm is driving away with it at the moment. He's got the fresh tyres as well. Pitted on lap 34, same as Kip Ford. Ford just basically matched him. And um, right now, 
be a bit gutted that he's behind uh, Dam with older tyres and being held up, I have no doubt. Yeah, certainly, here's Mike Dam <laughs> right behind uh, one of the Mustangs there of, is that the number 90, is that Ford. the 74 of Michael Hilliard? Oh no, that's Ford, excuse me. So, uh, Kevin Ford now straight past into the second position and Kevin Ford now reclaims that spot from Mike Dam. And after Mike Dam played the strategy to perfection, it looks like Ford now, Rick Motec Motorsports team has got another couple of seconds up ahead to Eero Nom. But apart from that, he looks pretty speedy at this stage of the race. Indeed, he does. I hate to do this as well at this particular stage in the race. Although, damn, just dropping back a little bit. We do need to head down and say hello to our, uh, our series sponsors as well as Rick Matek. So Frank, of course, supports the series and has done for absolutely ages. We'll uh, just uh, head on over and just um, show what he has available for us do go check out um, his store of course loads of bits and bobs on there as well so wheels pedals rigs you name it he's got it we'll be back in just a second Are you a fan of the Rigmotec Sports Car Series? Now is your chance to show off your favorite sim racing series by visiting our online store. With clothing and apparel for women and men in all sizes, merchandise and gift items like coffee mugs, laptop skins, mouse pads, and many more items to display your passion for sports car sim racing. Visit us today at ExtremeMotorsports99.com and click on the online store button. Thank you for watching and supporting the Rigmotec Sports Car Series. Welcome back to round three of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motec Sports Car Series. It's presented by Performer Elite Texas Graphics with all coverage today on Racebot TV. Oh, excuse me, not Racebot. That's muscle memory, Alec. God, it's that's, all right. I'll let you have six, that one. <laughs> four, five years, four, five years of Racebot. You can let me have that one. Apex Racing TV, of course, my new home, uh, one of my new homes, of course, for commentary in sim racing too. And Alex, um, <laughs> that is broadcast. Um, I've lost with, with where are we supposed to go. We're supposed to look at the MX-5. So the MX-5 is now on screen for Travis Schwenke. Uh, John Allen is right behind. Uh, the lead battle is still close as well. And for the past 40 minutes, of course, we've seen most of these drivers make their pit stop already, but the lead bunch hasn't changed at all. And I'm really not sure who's going to win this event. I mean, Travis Schwenke looks quick, but certainly hasn't broken away from the order. Yeah, I mean... I think he's got. I think he's got enough now, frankly. Um, even with traffic and things like that. So I do think the battle is going to be for second. Alan has got himself to the front of that. Charles, of course, the one that pitted quite a bit earlier than the rest. He's kind of just holding on. And I think the fact that he's got the draft now that kind of will help him. He will be able to stay in touch. So it was was a good call from him. But uh, yeah, I think Travis has got enough 
of a margin now to uh, hold on this. And uh, I actually think the same from um, from Nom as well. I do believe that he just needed that bit of fresh air between him and Ford, and he was going to be able to do it. He's got a back marker in his own class in between them at the moment as well. Monaghan, right there, you can see on our relative. Uh, and Dan Barely just driving. not able to hold on either, really, as well. Dan dropping back, so those few laps really hurt him that he popped in early. Sorry, with my pause there. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I, uh, exactly. But that's what we are talking about before. You make the early pit stop. You're going to struggle with tyres towards the late stage of the race. Patrick Prevenas in the MX-5s. He's currently 14th in the class for Previ Racing. He hasn't made a pit stop yet. And there he is on screen. Looking forward to see where he'll end up, but the problem is he's and he's so far behind the rest of the pack that I don't think his strategy is going to really reveal itself to the rest of the order. Yeah, unfortunately, he's not. He needs to be at the front at this point, doesn't he, to stand a to stand a chance, really? So, I have I have to say, I'm pretty sure I've seen Patrick um, pulled up at the side of the circuit. I've certainly seen that red MX5 in a bit of distress through this race. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so that maybe that strategy could have worked, you know, if he was able to uh, to have run cleanly through the, the bulk of this race. Could have been right in the middle of the uh, that sort of battle at the front at the moment. Of course, it would have dropped back, but it would have been a really good showing from, uh, from Patrick. I don't think he'll mind me saying that you know, he's not wouldn't have expected to have been running in there, but yeah, just the way it goes sometimes. And Patrick himself is another consistent Mazda driver, and uh, described himself, he's not flashy, but he not run up the front, of course, as well, but he races well with others mid-pack, and he turns into some solid race results, knowing that he's got a good points holder season, there's 18 points to his name, and despite uh, his lack of pace early on in these first few rounds, so points is what matters pretty much at the end of the day with a championship but you still have to be quick and that's what Aero Nom as you can see left hand side of the screen he's leading another race as we see one of the MX-5s I thought they were pulling into the pits there but they just pulled off the side of the racetrack to get out of the way there a lot of damage to that MX-5 what I'm trying to say is Aero Nom has been on the top step of the podium for two rounds doesn't look like he's going to be knocked off for round three Race consistency, it all comes together. There's no secret to racing. It's just practice and it's just put in the work and be fast and stay consistent. You'll end up winning races like Euro Nom has. I have told countless people, you know, just keep banging those laps in. It makes all the difference in the uh, in the end. And um, yeah, I should uh, listen to my own advice, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll put the laps in this season and uh, yeah, you can see the results. You a driver, you a big fan of the escape button. I'm a driver where I used to be a huge fan of it. If I had a spin, I'm like, no, I'm going to reset my car and, and get myself sorted. But I think sometimes if I'm doing a race run and I'm six laps into it and I have a spin, well, no, I'm going to just continue the race run. You know, I've got to learn not to spin it and stay consistent. Um, yeah, again, I, uh, I think if I know that I'm just doing sort of like five lap runs or something like that, just to sort of get an idea on actual sort of raw pace and performance, then yeah, I'll kind of reset. Um, and so these two just having a little battle, that's Fike and um, Violet. But yeah, if I'm doing, if I am doing an hour stint, then I absolutely will stay out there. I'll be like, no, yeah, you know, these little things can happen, little moments. It's good to sometimes get an idea on you know, if you do have a couple of um, icky moments that uh, you get an idea what the tyres and things like that are doing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for, um, yeah, not bailing and using the escape key. Yeah, I don't like it. It uh, certainly makes racing your consistency a lot better. We can see today drivers uh, looking at the off tracks. Mike Dam looks pretty close, doesn't he? Alex, based on our GPS data, as Kevin Ford now screams past 200 kilometers an hour as we ride on board your second place driver overall. Bit of contact between a couple of MX-5s ahead, and that would have been quite hair-raising for Kevin Ford. He would have had nowhere to go had they both made in the middle of the racetrack. And right now, Kevin Ford's uh, 
Kind of reeling Nero Norm up ahead, one and a half seconds behind, but he's going to deal with a couple of drivers here. The number, is that the number 09 of Geordie Bike, and finally gets out of the way. He needed to get through. I mean, these are obviously uh, sort of leaders in their relative sort of class as well, aren't they? So he's trying to be uh, he's trying to be good, but all the time you can just see that gap to um, to Norm increasing again. He's going to have to be patient through this final corner. He got that gap all the way down to 1.5 seconds, and here it is back at two point. That's going to be 2.2 .2 by the time he crosses the line. So, and again, Norm gets an absolute. Sort of, wow, well, does he? Just got held up just ever so slightly there, but yeah, every time you see the driver get through on the start finish line and then you know you're gonna have to go through in the corners, you, you, you curse. Kevin will be absolutely fuming in the car, but like, I need some luck. Where is it? That's uh, number head, that's Jonathan White, and the number 10 Delta Racing MX5, who's in between your two Mustang leaders. There's Jonathan White on screen. And he, wow, does he go quick over the uphill. Under the grass as well. Four wheels under the grass, of course. He's got 1.8 seconds through the driver of Lee Charles in the third position for that final podium spot. My goodness, was he pushing to the limit. Yeah, full commitment there. <laughs> Nothing else can be uh, can be said. Have it, send it, whatever you want to do. So, But, uh, yeah, he held on to it, that was for sure. So 10 minutes to go in this race as you can see we're on lap 54 of the one hour event and we will take a look at your order throughout the field for your Mustangs for a non for Team Bushfink is in the first position behind him is Kevin Ford and Mike Dam those three have been in a tough hustle for glory throughout these past 50 minutes. But with 10 minutes to go, who will end out on top? Hero Norm's led pretty much every lap of this event. He's been untouched, but Kevin Ford and Mike Dam have kept him honest. Those are your top three for your Mustang class, your top three for your MX-5. First place goes to Travis Schwenke, your pole sitter. Still up ahead in the Ashbury Motorsports car. He is followed by the driver of John Allen. Now we know John Allen was in a bit of a battle with Jim List for most of this event. Jim List is now a DNF this event after crashing at that final corner diving turn. And then there's Bobby Childs for D2D Esports in the third position. Bobby Childs pitted early, didn't he, Alex? Finds himself up the order, but can now be overtaken soon enough by Jonathan White. That is not Jonathan White in the 32 Mustang, of course, but in the blue MX-5 right behind. White reeling in for that final podium position. That is your order with now just over eight minutes remaining. And it looks like everybody's starting to realize time's creeping down. I don't have much time left, Alex. You know, they really have to get a move on. Absolutely, yeah, go time. Got to be got to be done. A um, couple of little battles out there right now. So Jacob and um, Raymond Bader Jr. And I say battle, they uh, were side by side there for a a moment, Jacobs holds on with the damage that uh, he's got, but uh, yeah, Raven looking good last lap. Well, they were pretty much identical the last lap, so that's um, ongoing. And then, um, yeah, Jonathan, he has um, caught up onto Bobby there, so yeah, Charles really under the pressure, starting to uh, to feel it now. And I have to say, I've been impressed by uh, White in this race. Very, very, um, yeah, very confident driver. And he's going to, um, I'm sure we're going to see him on the top step of uh, the podium at some point this season. Yes. Assuming he comes back, of course. Yeah, exactly. He looks very quick now, though. Look at the time creeping down to John Allen Whoa! ahead. It's two seconds out of the gap. Oh, there's an accident here at the final corner. Mustang and an MX-5 involved late in the event. Is that one of the leaders in the MX-5, possibly? Gonna find Chad out. Parker. Chad Parker involved. There's not a leader in your in your Mustang class, excuse me. There's Chad Parker on screen, Alex. Let's talk us through it. Ah, oh, just. I, I can only put that down as an unfortunate racing incident. Just they were so close, and that, yeah, I could justify my comment about there not being a lot of room on. Lime Rock Park now, that's what I kind of expected to see. 
that point a few more times this afternoon. And um, yeah, just it was just unfortunate. Like I say, you can argue some people should leave more room to the left and to the right, but personally, I think that's nothing more than a racing incident. And I'm that was Greg. Yeah, that was Greg Mack in the Two Plus Motorsports MX5. The incident being reviewed by race marshals. See if they think it's a racing incident, Alex. I'm I'm struggling to. I probably need to see better angles of it. We know the race marshals will take their time on that, but. Very uh, tough incident. I do get my wish. Don't I? Quick camera angle here. Oh, I don't know. That is possibly a racing incident. I'm, I'm just wondering if Parker have any room on the right-hand side. I, I don't believe he did. We'll look at here once again because I feel like it was almost three wide. He didn't want to move to the right. Well, he certainly had room to the right. It has to be said looking at that once again. Last one. Yeah, I think, um, it's not a lot of room either way, is there? And I think, you know, got to kind of argue, you've got to be allowed to get back onto the circuit. Of course, was on the curb in. Oh, it's a tough one. Glad I'm not, Stuart. I, I never, I could never do the steward role because I've, I've probably spent my whole career complaining about them and being unprofessional to them that I could never do it but all respects to the race stewards because you take yourself out of the driver's seat and out of the heat of the moment they do do a good job and your Grand Prix taken out of the way but uh, <laughs> with five minutes remaining uh, the stewards will review the incident both cars essentially out of this race Greg Mack is still out there but that damage will struggle to finish this event any quickly so it can be something that they can take their time on for sure, Alex. I don't think it will affect this event too much. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be. I, mean, I don't know exactly what sort of battles they were in at the point. But I know that I've certainly seen them do post-race bits as well in this series. So I dare say uh, if they need to, they will. Gap down to one second at the front on GS now as well. So we're really starting to help. Ford really showing what he's got today. Really, really good performance. And a bit of traffic for um, our leader as well. Now, if Ford can only get through the traffic in his own class quite quickly here, might stand a chance of back in that draft last few minutes. He can't do it though. I'd be I'd be flashing the lights like mad here. <laughs> trying to get, get yeah. him out of the trying to get him out of the way. I'm good screaming at the monitor, that's for sure. Good news for him is that Aero Nom's having a lot of trouble getting past an even slower MX-5. So, Aero Nom, oh, the problem for Ford here is, I know Ford's a little bit more patient seeing this race, lapping cars. So, he's got to get rid of this MX-5 before the uphill. Otherwise, he's going to lose an immense amount of time. Yeah, and right now, Nom is still being somewhat slowed up. Not quite the same. Gap back over a second. Oh! Ford looking one way. And having that's Travis as well, so he doesn't want to hit. Slinky there, of course. And Nom wants to get by as quickly as possible, but he's going to have to wait to the straight. And of course, now Kevin, he's not close enough to get by at the same time as Nom here, so he's going to again have to wait behind for another lap. Three minutes to go. Oh, with only a few laps remaining, only a few minutes remaining, the lead battle is going to get quite intense here. Aero no up the inside, gets rid of two cars who are quite lenient. And that is perfect. Aero Nom here to win three out of three. Unless Kevin Ford can get any closer, he's just struggling, gets the cars at the worst time. Doesn't want to be too aggressive in this race either. With only one Mustang out of the way, I don't think there's many lap cars up ahead to, to lap here. So, should be a clean battle for the race lead, of course, between Ford and Nob for your MX-5s in your ST class. Oh, there's nice. Travis Schwenke untouched with the lead. So, it looks like Schwenke should run away with victory despite, well, hopefully nothing going wrong. Yeah, you're right. Very comfortably ahead now. Again, hasn't been out enough. 
Ford not been able to get by. McDonald not moving out the way, although Kevin throws one up the inside. 1.2 seconds, that gap now. So Jennifer McDonald out of the way for the first time this afternoon. Only six cars remain on the lead lap in these next couple of minutes, but I don't think Alex here. It looks like Ford is too little too late. Spent 60 minutes trying to get past the Aeronom. Could never get it done. Well, that's a fair point. He might well get right on the tail, but he still needs to make the move, doesn't he? Even um, if he does get there. It's looking increasingly less likely now as the uh, track starts to clean up. Let's bring up the mini-map. Let's see exactly what we've got going on around them at the moment. <clears throat> I think this is kind of it, really. It's going to be clear. We're going to get one more lap in, I believe. It's going to be a bit close. I think we'll get one more in after this. Certainly. I'm ticked down, and this is the penultimate lap, isn't it? Yeah, so I think... I think we should. It's going to be very oh. close, isn't it, Alex? Charles into the pits in the um, MX-5 class. We just need to see this. So Bobby Charles came in early. Unfortunately, I, I can only assume, Johnny, that he's got his fuel just slightly wrong. Exactly that. Didn't get the jack the car up. Splash of fuel, maybe? Oh, it looks oh, like he might be, might be retiring. Absolute disaster for Charles. He had a chance for podium so deep into this race as well. Right. We are, we're not going to make it. This is going to be the checker flag then, Johnny. Over to you, mate. Yep, here it is. Eero Nom will cross the line and take victory for round three. The Extreme Motorsports, Rick Motec Sports Car Series from Lime Rock Park. What a victory from Eero Nom. He led every lap on his pursuit to victory. Kevin Ford behind could do nothing to stop Eero Nom and take him off that top step of the podium to begin this season. How about Travis Schwenke, though, in your MX-5? He wins round three from Lime Rock Park for Ashbury Motorsports. A brilliant event from Travis Schwenke, a man who came into this round, of course, all the way down eighth in the championship standings. He's driven phenomenally today, but it all starts, Alex, as we see some racing here to end the event. It all starts with uh, the driver of... Nom for Team Bushfink. Another race victory still remains untouched here and the drivers will have to go to round four next time out at Daytona to try and take him off that top step. Uh, but, yep, I mean, it's been the story of the last few seasons that has for sure. So, But uh, yeah, I'm really, really impressed with how um, Ford did today. Certainly, um, certainly gave him a run for his money. That's always the thing you see, he wins all these races, but it just doesn't tell. You look at the standards and you think he's absolutely smashed it, but it just doesn't say the full picture. Once again, some great, great competition for him out there today. The drivers return to the pits. Jonathan White is one of the drivers we focused on. He drove splendidly today. Let's take a look, though, at your final race results for your GS class, the Mustangs. Aero Nom wins today for round three. Three out of three victories, as we said. And he was closely followed by Kevin Ford in the Rickman Tech Motorsports car. Only one second behind for the lead. Mike Dam came home in third, drove very well today, of course, as well. And they were followed by the first of the D2D esports cars out there. I think seven D2D esports cars out there today, I counted. And he drove well to come home in fourth as well. Clint Vegas in the fifth position, followed by Jake O'Hanson. Jennifer McDonald once again in the open class for your GS, uh, driving quite well in that number 99. A good, solid seventh place for the BTL Motorsports team. If Jacobs close behind, of course, as well for Jacobs Racing. Uh, another few notable names down the order. Chad Parker, we know, involved in that late incident, of course, had a DNF uh, in this event. And a lot, the driver... Uh, Patrick Prevenas, I think, Alex, we'll talk about that later. Just trying to confirm that, of course, as well. Travis Schwenke wins your MX-5 ST Club, and he won this race quite solidly, of course, as well. He didn't have the lead for most of the event, but kept him, or kept his rivals honest, 
Asprey Motorsports driver won by five seconds ahead of John Allen, who drove really well today. We know Jim List all the way down there, 38 laps behind. He was up there battling for the lead. But with his crash at the final corner, that allowed Jonathan White, who drove well after the pit stop, to come home in the well, on the final step of the podium. Eric Violet, Jordy Fike in fourth and fifth, rounding out your top five. Bobby Charles down the order in the eighth position. The second, or the third, sorry, of two, of three D2D esports cars there uh, was the first driver who came home a lap behind. Bill McMurphy rounded out the top ten, of course, as well, and quite a few DNFs on the order, of course. Who the race marshal did not race. That is just the race marshal. <laughs> Jokes aside. Um, but a brilliant race, Alex. Those are your race results on screen. And um, I have to say, Lime Rock Park didn't disappoint today for the series. Never does. Such a great little circuit for racing, actually. Very, very overlooked. Um, you know, we just always think of it as the as the rookie circuit, so we just leave it alone. But, uh, yeah, some fantastic battling out there. So we've got a couple of drivers that um, want to come in for a, uh, a, a chat. So let's bring our race leader in um, and hand it over to you. Here is Eero Nom, your race winner for round three of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Mo Tech Sports Car Series. And Eero, another race victory, three wins out of three to begin the season. Uh, could it be any more perfect for you, has to be said? <laughs> yeah, it looks easy. I, I feel like you played the strategy to perfection again today. You were quick out there. Uh, with the driver of... Um, Driver behind there. Let me just get it up. Sorry, I've lost my live timing screen. It's Kevin Ford coming home behind 1.1 seconds behind. Were you ever worried about Kevin Ford possibly making a move for the lead or did you have it all pretty much under control? Yeah, let's say after the pit stop, I knew I was lit, uh, short a little bit and I was checking the lap times. Uh, because the temp temperature was falling all the time, the lap times were faster and uh, it was very close to one more lap. So at the pit, after the pit stop, I was saving the fuel the whole time. Did you, and we're talking about this in the broadcast, asymmetric setups, uh, running uh, the left different to the right, of course, really help around a track like Lime Rock Park and can gain you some lap time. Is that something you consider today or do you not want to spill in on your secrets for race wins? No, I know there how it does, this works. Uh, I've always uh, balanced. Always going for the balance. I like that. This is the type of guy I like, Alex. That's, how, that's the way I approach things. Um, Fourth round coming up, of course, as well from Daytona. It's a the Daytona road course, uh, fun track as well. A lot different to Lime Rock Park. High speeds. Do you think? Um, think with Daytona, you're gonna be able to use a, a different type of setup, or uh, will you have to adjust the car quite a bit compared to Lime Rock Park? Yeah, I might have. Uh, it's today is was very oversteer. I might have to dial that back, but yeah. The Daytona will be a very different race. So I expect very big back racing. Finally, who do you like to thank for race victory here today for round three of the series? Like always, I like to thank the admins who do the great job here and the sponsors and uh, you guys in the boat. Thanks very much. That is Ira Nam, your defending champion, Alex, and a driver who is going to be very hard to knock off the top step of the podium. He's driven splendidly to begin this season, of course, as well, with three race wins. Yeah, indeed he has. And yeah, oh indeed he will be as well, I think. Well done, uh, Eric. Good to, uh, good to chat to you again, mate. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again. Thanks, guys. Right, I'm going to drag in... Um, Kevin and have a little chat with uh, with Kev. Mr. How you doing, guys? <laughs> yeah, good. Mr. Ford, welcome. Congratulations on um, second place today. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. It was uh, it was quite a race. I tell you, Lime Rock always delivers the action. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to just stay consistent throughout the night. I knew traffic was going to be critical. Um, it was uh, real. I, I knew I had some pace. I felt good in practice yesterday. Uh, I had some good practice runs on Wednesday. Got the car dialed in on Wednesday, and by yesterday, it was just nothing but putting seat time in with it. So uh, that was nice for a change. And uh, came in tonight feeling feeling confident, and uh, and and it, it it played off for a change. <laughs> yeah, well, you certainly look good out there. I mean, that second stint, of course, after the pits. Um, 
you lost a little bit of time on on Nam. Of course, you were in third place, so you had to get past Mike. You did that, and you started hunting back down again. Just a little unfortunate with the way the traffic kept falling for you that last sort of 10 laps or so could never actually quite get on his tail yeah i was giving it everything i had i knew that i was inside the incident bonus uh, we do get an extra bonus point for staying under six off tracks and i was at five and uh, <laughs> i figured if i could get the bonus point i tied him for the win because i don't know if he stayed under six or not i saw him tapping that wheel off quite a bit so yeah the pit stop tonight uh, I, I came in just about two inches too deep and went to back up stalled the car got it started had to back up so that's that's how i lost the time in the pits but you just have to forget that stuff race the chalkboard and get back down to business and uh it, it fortunately played off for us tonight it was a good, good little injection of points for us in the championship yeah awesome um i mean can you carry that momentum forward into the next round I, I hope so. Yeah, I feel really good at uh, at Daytona that's coming up next, and uh, it's been a good track for me. Uh, a lot of draft there, so it helps balance the fields out a little bit. Uh, it's a little difficult to get away, obviously, but Daytona is always a, a crapshoot, if you want to call it, because you just never know how things are going to play out with that draft. But, yeah, looking forward to Daytona. Uh, we'll be starting on the setup this week on Wednesday at practice, and uh, looking forward to uh, another exciting round next week. Awesome stuff. Um, before we let you go, uh, Kevin, who makes it happen for you? Oh, just about everybody involved in the series. First, I want to thank you guys for an outstanding broadcast tonight. We got some great comments on how well you guys covered this insane action tonight. I knew you guys were going to be busy in the booth, but yeah, great job. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to everybody at uh, Rick Motek, uh, Frank, Oscar, all the crew there. Do appreciate all them for their support. Uh, and of course, thanks to my family and, and all of them for their support and all the staff at Extreme Motorsports, Jeff Jacobs, uh, Russ Ruddock, uh, Bobby Childs uh, for all his hard work on our graphics uh, just everybody involved we do appreciate everyone and thanks again to frank at rick motek for his sponsorship and also chris thorman at proforma for their sponsorship as well awesome stuff thanks mate uh, thank we'll you. see you obviously at daytona and wish you all the best of luck for that one <laughs> sounds great alex thanks guys we'll see you at daytona uh johnny who do you fancy speaking to um next we've got travis waiting down there or um st Class winner? Yeah, let's grab him in. MX5 winner, you know. He's probably waiting to spell on his excitement. Yeah, here's Travis Schwenke, your race winner for your ST class as well. And Travis, what a splendid race. You you started from pole. And I thought in the first few laps, you sort of dropped to fourth place. I thought you were going to drop off the order there, but you proved me wrong. You climbed your way back up the order and, and claimed a valiant victory. Yeah, I am uh, i don't have as John's really good at this track, and I just try to be smooth and when I'm in front of them, I kind of miss my marks a little bit. So I just kind of like, okay, if they have a good run, I'll let them go and just follow and get to the pit stop. And that really ended up being the, the, the maker right there. I, they both kind of messed up their pit stop, and I nailed mine. So that was the that was the difference maker in this one for sure. Strategy as well. You, I mean, you just said the pit stops proved a, a big point as well. But when it came to uh, strategy in terms of avoiding lapped cars, did you think – some Mustangs were creeping in on you guys early in the race. Did you think, hey, maybe I should pit here and just sort of um, find some clear track and, and lap away? Or was the, the plan always to go long on the pit stops and, and pit later in the race? No, definitely reading it based on how it was. And Hero and Kevin were in a, you know, pretty close together. And then there was a gap, a little gap to Mike. Um, and it worked out that they were going to catch us uh, uh, on the front stretch, I think. So it didn't hurt us at all, I think, when they went by. So I was definitely reading that and seeing where he was. I started watching him when he was about five seconds back and kind of figuring out where he was going to catch up. If he would have caught us in a bad spot, I probably would have gone ahead and pitted right, right then. And anything different today as to, to other rounds, um, the way you approach this race? Because you came in the points quite a, few, uh, quite a few places down in the standings in terms of championship points, but you came away with the race victory. Would you say it's a surprising race victory? No, no, I, I missed the second race, so that's that's why there's there's no points there. So um, I don't remember what happened in the first race. I don't know if I won that one or not, but uh, I was up in the up top in that one. So this this was a, I, I wanted to finish definitely in the podium in this in this event since Lime Rock's not one of my best tracks, but uh, you know winning it's a, a great great uh, icing on the cake for sure. Anybody you'd like to thank before we let you go? Yeah, thank uh, Frank for the support of the series and. Uh, 
thank uh, BSI uh, Racing down in Florida, my, one of my sponsors, and uh, Asbury Motorsports, my uh, team. So all the help and stuff they give me. Appreciate it. So there we go, Alex. That is Travis Schwenke, race victor for your ST class as well. He drove really well in that MX-5. We're just seeing him on screen here in the race. It wasn't it's watching this beginning of the race, Alex. It wasn't the most... Uh, it was a very abrupt uh, start for him, of course. Uh, a lot of drivers being swarmed by a couple of his opponents here. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much said to you, I think this is what we would see in this uh, class, that they're going to be absolutely uh, nipped up through the best part of it. And it really was. Um, you know, he just got that little gap and he was able to stretch it. And, um, yeah, was, I mean, that's kind of what win, wins races, really. Um, one driver that was in that little battle um and was fighting all the way um for um the best part of uh sort of two-thirds of the race was john allen who does join us for a little interview john welcome thanks guys how are you doing yeah good you're having a great little battle out there you know sort of six seven cars at one point in there um as always fighting pretty hard with uh, jim uh list of course but he had his issues and um, you came out of the pits, you're putting in purple lap times, but you'd already lost a lot of time and um, track positions as well. And I think, I don't know if you would agree with me here, but I feel like, uh, yeah, it kind of cost you uh, the, the win today, really, because you, um, yeah, you had to fight back through just to get to second. And by then, Travis had already disappeared up the road. Yeah, I, uh, you know, you never know. Traffic is so heavy in this course it, it does so much to give and take away time but um i think that i mean definitely the pit stop was a catastrophe i i filled it to the brim which meant i had an extra 12 laps uh, at the end Oof. so you know that's why travis uh, had checked out when we after the pit stop because we all pitted together he and i and jonathan and jonathan kind of pitted with me uh you know his first time in the series he went in as i did went out as i did which meant he filled to the brim as well so we made the same mistake but um um, yeah, I put my head down and was charging. And at one point in time, uh, once I got clear of, you know, the extra cars I had to get around to get back into second, that's when I was finding a real rhythm. And I think I pulled about 1.2 seconds off of Travis and maybe five laps and started doing the math thinking maybe I can get there, but traffic took it back away. So I was just glad to get home, uh, in one piece after a couple other near misses. It was just good to show you even more impressive that you put in the fastest lap. Um, like I say, not not long after you come out of the uh, the pits with all that extra fuel, so yeah, um, amazing. I mean, um, still a really good, strong result. Um, loads of points for the uh, for the championship, which is uh, just what's key at this early stage of uh, of the season. Yeah, yeah. That, my issue has been in the past consistency, and that often leaves me chasing from behind at the end. Um, last season it worked out by one point at the very last race so <laughs> i was still in touch but uh this you know it's been a while since i've been able to kind of go for it from the lead and i'm trying really hard to stay up there this season yeah awesome stuff well john who um who makes happen for you and uh yeah give us a uh, give us those shout outs uh, yeah, well, kind of unique this go-round, um, having had some mishaps in the real car uh, since our last race, uh, in fact, pretty much totaled the real Spec oh. Miata, so uh, there's a lot of parts to be transferred over to another rolling chassis, but um, the help I've received you know, from friends at uh, Defined Auto Works and uh, Midwest Miata Parts and the like, some of the real partners there are, allow me the time to still do this and not be out there working on the car right now. So <laughs> um, that's really appreciative to them. And, and a bit of shout out tonight to uh, Jonathan White getting the podium on his on his debut in the series. Awesome job. Yeah, I totally agree with agree with that. Thanks, John. Um, we'll see you at uh, D Daytona, I have no doubt, and wish you all the best of luck. Likewise. Thanks, guys. Right, Johnny, I have to say, I don't know who, um, you know, yeah. snip, Snipper Doodle, Doodle is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Snipper Doodle? <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm afraid of dragging him in, because I, and I could have prepared the interview questions of, as well. I like to always uh, just come quick. in 30 yeah. seconds prepared. We're happy to hear everyone. Yeah, just, just let us know, you know, change your, uh, change your name on the Discord so we know who it is. But I think we are going to wrap it 
wrap it up as it's uh, five to three in the morning for me here. Does it really? <laughs> so it's um, I uh, I well you can you can suffer with that because you know I'm always broadcasting at three a.m. in the morning. I'm glad this <laughs> one's at noon here, so I can take that to to heart. But um, let's uh, wrap up your broadcast today for round three the series. The next race will be on the 17th of June. That's in just one week's time. It'll be for 60 minutes around the Daytona road course and it hosts round four of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motec Sports Car Series presented by Performer Elite Texas Graphics, one of our sponsors here today. That will be on Apex Racing TV. <laughs> It'll be streamed live on our associated platforms. Uh, here today, of course, as well. Thanks to all you viewers for joining us. You've been splendid as always. I am Jonathan Simon alongside Alex Simpson in commentary, and he's on production, of course, as well. Thanks to him and our entire Apex Racing TV crew who get it done for us. Brilliant to work with a new team. It's been thrilling so far because this has been an Apex Racing TV presentation. We will say so long from the beautiful Lime Rock Park, you can see. And we will see you at Daytona in just a week's time.